Hello everyone and welcome for another video of Love and War Games. In this video, we are going to talk about the Kione Kion Battlefleet set for the Covenant of the Enlightened. And I'm very excited because the ship looks amazing. Just the artwork, look at it. Like, doesn't it make you want to buy the box? Well done, marketing team. And it looks huge, like <laughs> on this. Uh, I do have some mess uh, four and some mess threes of the Covenant to make some size comparison and also the different variants. So we'll open the box and we will later on in the second half of the video make a little tactica about how to use the Kione and how to play each of the variants of the little ships that you can have. Uh, do note at the moment of the recording of this unboxing, so the first half of the video, uh, we do not have yet the data sheets and the new orbit for the Covenant, so I'm a little bit blind there. So we'll try not to make too many guesses about how you play them. We'll first focus on the sizes and the miniatures and what already exists and what we already know. And then in the second half, we'll talk about the tactica. Without further ado, let's open the box. Okay, I'm quite excited to see how it's going to be. All right, here is the mess four. Well, oh my God, it's huge. Okay, we'll keep it for later because we are first going to take a look at the rest that you get inside. And I'm quite excited. Do we get an updated sprue? I think yes, I hope yes. You do get uh, six, well, eight, I hope, eight SRS tokens, uh, which is good because that is the minimum that you will need if you want to make an, two of these two ships that you get from the two support sprues as Plinius aircraft carriers. Uh, but it makes me now think that you might run out because on these sprues you do have uh, some of the SRS tokens but you also have the Fisiteers uh, whales. So that you might run out as we've seen recently with the Crimson League Battle Fleet or a little bit in the future depending on when I publish the videos. Uh, we do not have enough SRS tokens in a single box. Makes me a little bit uh, sad. Like, depends. I don't know if the Kion will have a capacity to make some uh, Fisitier ambush. I suppose it will. But if it does uh, have a Fisitier ambush or it just can send Fisitier tokens by himself, it means that you will not have enough token if you buy just this box to make the Fisitiers of the Kione and to have two Plinius at the same side, time. Not a huge deal because you can just tell how many uh, SRS token you have to your enemies but it's a quite a new thing for a War Cradle to not put enough SRS tokens in the boxes. So you have two of these uh, little um, Covenant support sprues and you can make two ships with this. First of all, you see quite a lot of the space is made, is taken by the SRS tokens here and also by the little uh, whale there, the Fisitier token. Do note that this is not an Orca token, this is a Fisitier token. They have two types of whale. The big whale, the Fisitiers, that is a boarding ship, at least it was in version 3.04. And you have the Orcas, which are more like damage dealing, which are in the advanced sprues of the Covenant. But don't worry if you buy the Kione, because the support sprue is the superior sprue, because those are like very good ship, all the variants. We'll talk more about this in the Tactica, and we'll see if the update has changed that but all the versions, the Quintilian, the Tacitus, the Plinus, all of those are amazing ships. Even the Claudius for this price cost is great. You do have some of these uh, special weapons of the Covenant. You have um, Particle Beamer, you have these little Belgian waffles, which are uh, Stergenium Atomizers, if I'm not mistaken, and special uh, Null Shields, Null Generators, sorry, Clone Generators, and all of these uh, special generators that the Covenant love. So we know this sprue already, no big differences, probably it's in the resin part that you will be able to make the alternative variants of the submarines, because this is the head of the submarine for the Praxilla, this for the Diogenes, and that is it. That is it. So you can make two submarines and with the different head versions. Yep, that's it for now. So let's have a look at the resin part because this is what we all are waiting for. And so oh, just one last thing before I do everything, uh, I pointed to you the head, but I can show you what it looks uh, painted. So submarine with the drill head is going to be the uh, Praxilla that you can see right here if I can focus on it. The alternative head is going to be the torpedo launcher, the Diogen like this. Much more efficient right now in game, but who knows what will change. We'll talk about it in the Tactica soon. 
And I have two versions of this ship to show you. First of all, the Quintilian with its cyclonic missile launchers here. Looks very cool. Very good extreme range blast weaponry. Very rare in the game and very powerful. Has also a generator in the back that you, where you can put whichever you want. Fury, shield, shroud, etc, etc. We'll talk about in the Tactica which generator to put. And finally, the Plinius, an amazing carrier. It's quite rare that the basic carrier of the faction are good, but this is not only a carrier, but it has a lot of weaponry. It's quite tough as well. So it's just a good combat ship that also happens to have part of its uh, DPS um, be made by SRS tokens. And now that we've said this, let's have a look at the resin. Okay, here is the Kione. My God, it's huge. He's up, yeah, it looks great, it looks great. It's though much larger than I anticipated. It has a weird shape that, I will not say what it reminds me of, but it's such a weird like shape. It's not straight. You can see that its tail is a little bit going on the right, but we can anticipate that this is supposed to indeed wiggle around so it can swim under the oceans. Very cool. But the thing that surprises me is its length. We'll make some size comparison in a minute. It has some, I think it's going to be called an Aetheric Lance Array because otherwise it means it has eight Aetheric Lances like this or maybe even if you multiply because it's supposed to be also in the bottom it's going to be something like 12 or 16 it's definitely not going to get that so we'll see what weapons it gets exactly you do have some resin submarines there to glue there or more like this and then to glue there I'm guessing Am I missing half of it? Like this guy is full, this guy is not full. I'm wondering why. Okay, I'm not sure I will get the answer anytime soon. Okay, probably it's like this. Okay, it's not, it's supposed to just touch the water to simulate the fact that it's partially submerged. Okay, and simulate the impression of movement. Quite smart actually, okay. And yeah, with all these uh, submarines, it, it is a submarine carrier. It is carrying a repeat, as we can see from the new face here. Uh, we'll have to see if it can carry things like Praxillas, for example, which would really appreciate being able to be carried next to the enemy, or not. You also have, in, as there is in part, some alternative heads for the Euripides. Uh, you have more heads than needed, because you can make four submarines with this, but they give you two extra heads, uh, maybe just in case you have some extra submarines uh, from other sprues and you want to convert them. Quite nice of them to give more heads than needed, even though I have to point out if you want to make them repeat, you will not be able to get them from the support sprues, etc. You will have to buy a Kion uh, battlefield set. Each time you will want, you will want six repeats. And that's it, that's only there that you will be able to find them. And then you have this. I actually don't know, I don't have the building instructions yet. Uh, we'll have to see what it does. Probably uh, maybe something to glue uh, there, like I see a little space. But we'll see when it's built. In a battle report, this absolutely gargantuan ship. Let's compare it, for example, the length with, for example, uh, Daedalus of the Covenant, which uh, will be, no, it will not be up to win. <laughs> I forget what, what I said. Uh, but as you can see, it is longer than this iron ma ironing machine that is the Daedalus, even though the Daedalus is higher. If we compare it with the longest ship, which is the Archimedes slash Nansenai. It's magnetized, I made a wrong mix. But we can see that it is actually quite longer, well, than, no, quite longer than the Archimedes. So it is a real mass four, a little bit less thick, but very long. And if I put the Descartes next, we can see that the Kion is indeed extremely thin, but very, very long, like much longer than every, everything else. Might be fair to call it the mass three as well because it is uh, very thin, like all in length, but we will see uh, in the Tactica what it is. Uh, talking about this, let's, uh, without further ado, go for the Tactica and see how you can play each of the variants. We will talk about the Kioni itself, we'll talk about the Euripid, and we will talk about how you can expand beyond the Kion Battlefleet set if you want to get more out of your covenant. Okay, we are now covering the Tactica and the What to Build because uh, by now we have the Covenant Orbat, which went through a few phases of beta between the moment I made the unboxing and today. 
and we are now like at the end of March. We are in version 3.05 for the Covenant and we have the final orbit for the Covenant that will uh, remain for the months to come. So now we can talk about the Kion and indeed it was a mass 3 in the end. So let's have a look at all of this. And the first thing that we will talk about is the Covenant playstyle in general. Um, the Covenant, as you might know, is the most high-tech faction of the setting. And so, of course, their ships are very elite, but of course, they cost a lot of points. They do have their own specific tricks and a lot of exotic weapons. Most of their weapons are unique to, to the Covenant. The other seven factions, they sometimes share like their rocket batteries, gun batteries, they're the same everywhere, except the Covenant, which have their very own unique weapons, their own broadside, their own gun batteries, their own torpedoes. Everything is different for the Covenant compared to the other factions. Usually they have more sustained. They're usually quite fragile for their point cost. Um, like they, they are resilient, but they have low armor. They're more than any factions in the game, they are going to be, and this is what is written there, they are going to be in a rock, paper, scissors system where they have low armor, uh, but they have a ton of defensive tricks, which means that if you attack them with small dice pools, uh, like smaller attacks, or with some uh, weapons that they really like because they have a lot of counters, you might end up like bouncing off their shields and their defenses, etc. But if you shoot at them with the right weapons, the Covenants are just going to melt. With the new 3.05 version of the Orbit, which we're not going to make a full details, uh, they have been even more uh, reinforced as a point blank and closing faction because they have something called an Entropic Generator, which uh, helps them a lot within 15 inches. It's going to be less dices for the enemy and uh, especially if you shoot at a Covenant ship within 15 inches uh, then you have no rerolls whatsoever. So of course if you didn't have rerolls you don't care but it, it means like uh, Focus Gunnery for example does not reroll blanks, Fusillade does not reroll blues, like um, Sustain does not work. Like It means that some weapons, especially like for example broadsides, which are low uh, dice but high reroll uh, weapons will completely bounce off the Covenant and they become almost like unusable. Uh, and that's something that is really important for the Covenant more than any other faction in the game. You need to have the right tools to deal with them. I'm not sure if it's a good thing for game balance, but it means that Covenant are going to be very good against some weapons, some ships, some factions and very weak against some others. Ironically, it means that Covenant versus Covenant uh, matches, like mirror matches, are going to be very not fun because they're all of their lethality is with a lot of rolls and at point blank, which means they're always going to be in range of the of the entropic generators of each other, and it means that uh, they're not going to do a lot of damage, uh, which I guess is fluffy because your scientists work with each other, don't shoot each other. What do you get in the Skion? We've just seen this in the unboxing, but just as a reminder, you have this big uh, Kion, this massive ship that is extremely interesting. You got two support cruisers, again, very good cruisers, and you have six submarines. And the thing that I know now uh, that I can tell you is that, of course, it's submarines that you can build as Praxilla and as Diogenes, or you can build them as Eurypid, which is this version here with a funny nose. And uh, I don't usually say this in videos, but absolutely don't build them as Proxillas and Diogen. Big warning, because um, you need, like, you don't need... Uh, you, when you build the Kion, when you have it in your fleet, you have six repeat for free. And this is exactly what you get in the box. So you really shoot yourself in the foot, uh, points-wise, if you don't build the repeat as uh, repeat, and if you build them as another variant. So 100% all the time with this box, build the submarines as a repeat. I'm not go even going to discuss the other options, which are good, the Eugenics are still amazing. But if you buy this box, don't ever build the submarines as something else than a repeat. They are meant to be together. You have these six ships for free when the, you buy the Kion. So do build them. You also have two visitor tokens, which is weird. Like you don't have anything to launch them with, but okay. And you have two SRS token, which is good because you can build some aircraft carrier with the support cruisers. We are first going to talk about the Kion in detail because this is why you're here. Like you're like, what does this new ship do? Like I know the other ones, but what does it do? There are a few things that I'm going to say. 
the first thing is that it's 410 points and then you're like what the hell but as i've said for this price you have the kion but you also have six repeat so we don't have the price of the repeat per unit uh, because you cannot buy them separately but we can estimate that uh, they're about i don't know 30 points per unit which means that the kion depending on how much you value the repeat and they're quite strong uh, the kion is around 200 to 50 points let's take a bigger uh, fork so it is relatively cheap and it's very good like i, I love this <laughs> model like it gives a huge uh, it gives a new tool that is hugely important in the covenant toolbox which is uh forward aggression in turn one uh, before that uh, if you really wanted to have turn one aggression you had to focus with honeybus which is a new uh, option they have now the honeybus the flying saucers have a cloud dive and they can be a huge threat turn one and if you want another options uh, then the Onibu, you can put the Kion, which has forward deployment. And it means that turn one, you can really put it close to the enemy front line. And it has this repeat automatis, which means when you deploy a Kion, you also deploy these six, this one pack of six repeat, which is like very, very lethal. So what does it do? First of all, the, the, I want to insist, when you deploy with forward deployment, it means that most of the time the enemy will be within range at some, like very early turn one, of your entropic generator. So they're going to have less dices, and when they shoot at you, they are going to not have any rerolls. Uh, plus, combined with the fact that you are submerged, so some weapons will consider you as obscured, it means that you will absolutely nullify some weapons. I mean, broadside shooting at you, uh, they're going to have a very hard time Doing any points of damage. I'm not even talking about gun batteries and stuff like this. Very good point. The Kion is not that fragile either. It has uh, Armor 7 Citadel 13 with Entropic Generator, good, and uh, like minus one dices, and it has good value, especially of SDV, which is what you might have bet against. And that is good. Six whole points before it, it gets crippled, good. And then it has another four. So for the point cost, I would say like it's one of the toughest submarines you can find out there. It also has Luminiferous defenses, which means that when you get shot, for example, by gun batteries or broadside and stuff, you will use your four dices of ADV to try to counter this. Quite good, quite uh, like it always statistically makes minus two hits. And again, when you don't uh, reroll and you don't explode against the Kion, it means that your enemy will have to dedicate serious firepower if he wants any chance to kill you fast enough. And since you will be in its line very fast, he will want. So what else does it do? Like we'll talk about the repeat a little bit later. It has one forward torpedo salvo and one backyard uh, torpedo salvo. Okay. And one etheric torsion array, which is all those weapons that you see in the front. We are going to talk about this a little bit. The one thing that we can talk easily is the torsion array. This thing only shoots at point blank, uh, which could be annoying, but since you have forward deployment, you will be closed. It is 11 dices. Uh, okay arc sustained against submerged unit so 11 dices arc it's already fine and uh, when you consider that you gain sustained against submerged it means that you will absolutely obliterate uh, submarines uh, at, like guaranteeing a critical on basically any submarine of the game like except if you shoot at another kion actually uh, but this is really really strong this really makes a kion a great submarine hunter and uh, yeah they, they're just a uh, good weapon with arc on top of that. Submarines usually have low armor and low citadel, and 11 dice is sustained is basically a guaranteed critical. So that is already a good weapon. It also has um, these uh, precognizant torpedo salvo, which is basically the covenant version of the heavy torpedo salvo. We'll see it a little bit later, but it's uh, 11 dices. And it's already good. It's 11 dice at all the ranges, not extreme range. Uh, be careful with these torpedoes. And it has sustained. So good. <laughs> like uh, no, Nothing to say except that it's a good weapon. And the um, Kion has a special rule called triangulated solution, a rule that we've seen for the first time for the Union. It means that uh, one attack with torpedoes uh, per round, usually it's going to be the forward one, is going to get plus five dices if the initial target is within 15 inches of any model with hydrophone relay. And little spoiler, the um, repeat have, of course, hydrophone relay, which means that since they deploy with you, you most of the time, basically all the time, will shoot your precognizant torpedo salvo at 16 dices sustained. So again, that starts to be a lot of firepower. 
do know that the Kion does not have any broadsides whatsoever, only front and rear weaponries. So it is worth it when you deploy it to just point the front to the enemy because you have no broadside weapons whatsoever. Be also careful, it has vulnerable stern. So again, maybe deploy it on the sides and don't show your tail to any opponent. Final thing that I will say is that it has the microwave control node and uh, one thing else, it has deep dive. Of course, it's a submarine, uh, might be useful. Um, but be careful, the uh, torsion array does not technically have submerged, so you cannot shoot the torsion array if you're in deep dive, so, which is very weird, uh, but something to consider. The last special rule is microwave control node, which means that friendly model with the automata trait, so the repeat, of course, but if you have, I don't know, around, it also works. They add two dices for their own repair dices. Okay, sure. Uh, that's always fine, I guess, even though, like, I don't see any uh, mess one ship getting uh, critical damage most of the time, so it's a bit useless, but this is where it gets interesting. Uh, this unit, so the Kion, if it gets a catastrophic explosion, you may ignore the catastrophic explosion and just kill a friendly model with automata trait within 10 inches. That is good because catastrophic explosion is usually two dices and a critical, like it is very bad. And um, if your enemy passes your citadel, uh, it's extremely useful to just say like, you know what, I ignore this uh, in exchange for an early uh, It's You're gonna want to do this basically every single time, except if you're already dead anyway, um, because you, we know from the Sultan how strong ignoring the catastrophic explosions can be. Uh, do note that uh, it counts as any catastrophic explosion, not just from shooting. So if you get boarded by another submarine, I don't know, let's imagine like by uh, the Deathbringer, for example, of the Russians, uh, you get boarded by this guy, he makes you a carnage, which uh, the result is two catastrophic explosions. Very bad, like, ouch. Uh, well, you can just say, you know what, I just lose two uh, repeat, and no, uh, you don't do me anything. So <laughs> that is a uh, very strong capacity to have, and uh, quite fluffy to say, like, you know what, I'm just going to throw my submarines in front, and you're going to board them or shoot them, and they're going to die. Overall, I really like the Kion. Uh, on its own, it's a fine ship, but especially all the combos that it has with its repeat uh, is really nice to see. Like, it's good to see the flagship and its unit having so many synergies with each other. We then switch to the repeat, and this is what I was saying. Like, you have no price. It's like one free unit with each Kion, and it's a one pack of six. Wow. Um, it's a submarine, first of all. So again, quite tough. Uh, three points, uh, armor 4 is low, but still 10, like, it is not easy to deal, not that easy. It has hydrophony relay, as I've said, it also means that uh, when you shoot at a unit uh, close to the repeat, it cannot be obscured, so they are good at uh, triggering, like, preventing your enemies to be obscured, okay. They have two main roles, and both of them mean they need to be extremely close to your enemies. Um, they have the Konodotic Flancer, uh, which is a torrent weapon, a small torrent, so you really need to be close. Uh, the, the Chinese players uh, know that uh, playing with a lot of small torrents can be built. Just note that only one unit, uh, when you shoot with this, needs to put the torrent uh, template down, and then the other units, uh, the other ships in the unit, only need to be at point blank to be able to link. So even if you have only one ship that is technically uh, able to put the torrent uh, template uh, on the enemy, it's fine, like you don't need to put six times the torrent to see which can link and which cannot. Just one time you put down the small torrent template, not great, uh, and then all the others can sustain. And they can sustain well because it's 4-3, so it's kind of like broadside, let's say, uh, but <laughs> with a torrent, so you can really uh, do a lot of damage uh, turn one if your opponent is not careful. And, and, and it's devastating. It's like, what? What? So this means you can make 22 dices, if I'm not, sorry, 19 dices, uh, if you shoot with all your repeat at point blank. Uh, 19 dices, devastating. Uh, let me tell you that this, with a torrent, you can, of course, absolutely obliterate every single <laughs> mess one that you target. You can even make two different torrents and link differently, but you can also basically aim for a critical or double citadel for a mass two, like this is a very, very powerful weapon. Do also note um, that it can be uh, like attached uh, to the Kion, which means that you will activate both at the same time, which might be what I recommend you to do. Uh, yes, they cannot link together, uh, sad, but 
happens but it means that you can really position them uh, well so you can put the repeat in good range of the enemy so you have the uh, bonus for the torpedoes like, uh, for your kiln and it means your repeat will still be in range of the protection aura of uh, the kiln. like it's good to play them at the same time not because they link together well but uh, because it allows you to keep these uh, auras like these bubbles of protections with each other which is important because otherwise, if you activate one and gets out of range of the other uh, unit, uh, your enemy might use this to make an activation and, for example, shoot at your Kion while you're repeat or forward and cannot absorb the critical damage uh, for your Kion. So very good to attach them and to make a very, very powerful first activation turn one, which is probably what you want to do anyway. They also have, because they're not just a torrent weapon, they also have pulse broadsides. Don't forget it, it's not a bad weapon, the pulse broadsides. Like, if you get in good range at point blank, six pulse broadsides is no joke. Like, those, the people that play, like, uh, the Merian and all this shit. Like, it, it's not crazy, but it, it's not uh, insignificant. And they also have flensing mo, which means that these guys that have Frey 8, which is insane for an automata, have devastating when they make an assault. So free 8 plus uh, 10, because you have uh, 5 ships uh, supporting, it's going to mean free 18 devastating if you board all the same ship. And basically, uh, almost every time, it is going to be a carnage result, which means uh, 2 a catastrophic explosion on the opponent, on your target, which is insane. Um, that is really, really cool, good. Um, I think that actually Mechanical Soul, soul might uh, nerve this a little bit. It might not be 18, it might be 13, uh, now that I'm thinking about it. But still, Frey 8 devastating with this big unit, it's going to be really, really good. Uh, do this every single time uh, that you can. Like If you can, use them turn 1, the repeat, the Kion, um, to make all your shooting, make all your broadsides with the repeat, make your torrents, make your like everything, and at the end you make the boarding with the repeat, this is going to be a very powerful alpha strike for your opponent. And then he's like, do I focus uh, firing on the Euripid and the Kion that have already activated and already did their damage and are submerged and quite protected? Or do I focus on the rest of the Covenant fleet that is charging me down further down the line? This is really going to put a lot of trouble for your opponent. If you are naughty naughty and you want a competitive list, having one unit of two Onebus with Cloud Dive and a Kion plus Euripids as two very powerful turn one activations uh, right like straight in your face to your opponent might be uh, very difficult to deal with because you're going to trigger Entropic Generator very fast and your opponent is really going to have difficulties to handle both of them. Uh, in this case, uh, maybe activate the, I don't know, like I will not give tips on what to activate first, but this is already a very, very strong start for Covenant Fleet. And now we switch to the different support cruisers. So we know them already. I've talked about them quite a few times. I'm just going to uh, summarize uh, everything for the new players uh, there. And so you know the differences. The Tessitus now um, is even better than before. It was great. It got a little bit nerfed. It was less tanky. Now it got this heavy torpedo salvo, precognizant torpedo salvo, which uh, we've seen is 11 dices at basically every range, which is great. Tessitus still as good as always. Frey 9, but it has La Marquian Barracks, which means you have sustained, hazardous, and devastating on your assaults, which is like great. You have also two particle beamers, which link very well with focus gunnery. Again, very good weapons. Luminiferous defense is at 6 of ADV, even better. And uh, yeah, you can start the game at turn 1 in Wave Lurker, which is probably what you want to be to do because you are uh, better at uh, point blank, uh, because you want to board and stuff. Uh, and then turn 2, you will be basically at Anthropic Generator range. And yeah, if you don't know what to build, having two Tacitus is not a bad idea at all, because your enemy will have to deal with your Kion turn one and in the meantime your tacitus which are wave lurking anyway can just charge down and be uh, like survive because your enemy will not be able to deal with them right away and then they'll be in range of um, entropic generator and then you can just have fun they also have two small seeker rocket batteries on top of that yeah. and this really means that those the tacitus are the elite cruiser of the covenant I love them. I think they look really cool. You can have a free generator in the back, for example, a Shroud, for example, or a Fury, for example. 
Like, there is no bad decision to be made with the Tacitus. It's an amazing ship. Also really good is the Plinius. It's a bit cheaper. It's not at 140, it's at 133. It has two uh, Seeker rocket batteries, which is fine. It also has cloud hunting. So if you shoot at an aerial, you might want to do that. You're going to have uh, 11 dice homing. Good, very good. It has a small weirding torpedo salvo, still not negligible. And it has, of course, Luminifero's defenses. So it's quite tough for, <laughs> for a carrier because it's going to have six armor. Uh, 11 of Citadel, and 6 ADV roll against, I don't know, for example, gun batteries that are shooting at it. So, a bit tough, and when it gets crippled, it still sends 3 SRS tokens. So very good. Again, it can be wave lurking turn 1, it can still send its SRS token if it does that. And uh, yeah, overall, it's a very, very good carrier. For me, it's one of the best carriers in the game. Like, the, the Covenant uh, used to have not such great uh, cruisers, uh, but they had some amazing support cruisers, and the Plinius is proof of that. It's really one of the best carriers in the game. It's tough. It does have very good SRS tokens, which, by the way, have group, th group uh, think piloting, which means you need four counters to make one interception. Amazing. And yeah, it degrades slower, a little bit like the Italians, but also has this incredible 6 ADV of Luminiferous defenses. And if your opponent tries to get too close, they have Entropic Generator. Remember that. Like, very very good carrier and plus it looks so cool like but this is the criteria but yeah i love the plinius as well and we continue with uh, units i love it got a bit nerfed and i cannot recommend it as much as i recommend the other two the previous two it is the quintillion it sent uh it has two tyndall cyclonic missiles which is an amazing name and it looks incredible on the miniatures uh, and yeah it launches these kind of like cyclonic cruise missiles and its role is to basically bully your opponent's mass one ships because it sends blast at extreme range and need i say more 12 dices at extreme range is maybe sometimes you will run out of luck and you will not do much but this is basically you with a single quintillion saying to your opponent any one of your mass ones on the map that i can see i will put a template and everything that is under it it will die 12 dices Okay, sometimes it will get a good roll of ADV and it will not die. But 12 dice, statistically, there is always the risk in your opponent's head that yeah, everything under one template will die. Uh, everything mass one. And then it really impacts uh, your opponent's deployment, how he moves, etc. As long as you have your quintillion, and be careful the weapon is limited so you can run out of ammunition, so be careful about that. And maybe put a support ship around to give it uh, ammunition back. Uh, as long as you have this, and you have spotter as well if you want to uh, get uh, homing as well. So, uh, great combos to be made here. I will not go too much in details. But this is basically a big headache in the head of your opponent if he has some frigates and some mass ones. Because these ships is always this sort of Damocles sword about, above your opponent's head that, will, that forces him to play very conservatively with his mass ones. Otherwise, he will get sanctioned. It also has two secure rocket batteries, some torpedoes on top of that. It's tough. It has a red generator in the back, uh, ADV of six, uh, which is important for the luminiferous defenses, like oh, <laughs> entropic generator, all this stuff that we've said that uh, do mean that, again, the if your opponent does not shoot at the Covenant with the right weapons, they are extremely hard to deal with. Again, rock, paper, scissor for the Covenant even more than before. And finally, we have the Claudius Merchantman, 65 points, quite cheap, uh, like very cheap. Only the two uh, Seeker Rockets and the Weirding Torpedo Salvo, quite fragile. And uh, the big thing about this guy is that it, well, small thing is that it has useful freight, always useful. It is quite cheap hull point because 65 points, yes, you have 3 slash 5 hull points, but you, remember you have armor 6, you have an Entropic Generator, you have an ADV of 6 for uh, Luminiferous Defenses, Starts to, and you have a generator in the back if you want to put a shroud or something and wave worker. It can be very annoying for your opponent to deal with this. And so that's already a good thing. And you have Minesweeper as well, something important. The thing that you can do is you pay plus 80 points. So you pay 145 in total. That is uh, difficult. That is uh, quite a big investment. But it means that at the start, when you start to play the Clodius, you can say, you know what, this unit, I remove it. And I replace it with the Plinius, with the, Quint with the Quintillion, or Tacitus, the three models we've seen before. And that is good, it gives you some versatility. Be careful because you need to have the actual model, even though you can proxy, it's fine, I guess. And uh, yeah, and then you remain this new ship. Uh, do note, 
you cannot have any upgrade. Uh, you have the generator that you had before. Uh, you do you do carry uh, all the damages that you had received before. So if you lost, I don't know, five whole points, uh, sorry, uh, like two whole points, the other unit loses it as well. Um, but you don't carry over any critical uh, damage marker. Be very careful though. This, I would not recommend to do that, even though it's very fun and tempting, yes. Uh, why I wouldn't recommend it? Because you can only do this if you're battle ready. And three whole points can be gone very in a single attack. Like the enemy does 11 uh, hits on you, which can happen. You have a bad luck, uh, sorry, 12 hits. You have a bad luck, it's two damage plus, for example, I don't know, Sturginium Flare, boom, uh, you are crippled, you lost your capacity. And if you if this happens, it means you spent 80 points for nothing. 80 points is uh, more expensive than a second Claudius, for example. So very, very risky tactic uh, because it can only work when you're battle ready. And yeah, I would not do this. I would buy a Claudius just for itself as a cheap hold point. You send it to the center, your enemy will have to deal with him. It's a minesweeper, it has useful fright, and that's how I would play it. But I would not play it as a Q ship, except if you are really keen on this and it, you, it sounds very fun for you and you want to try it. Then okay. But otherwise, yeah, just buy the normal Claudius or the normal Tessitus or Quintilian or Plinius. And that is going to be it. We're not going to describe the two small submarines that you can build with it. Um, the Diogen being the torpedo launcher and the Praxila being the ramming uh, submarine because, again, you will not build them with this f uh, force. And we are going to talk about how to expand beyond that. Like you bought the Kion, what else? Well, if you have the Kion, I suppose you already have the Covenant Starter, but if you don't, uh, you should have it because it has everything that you want to start a good Covenant force. You will have, uh, first of all, the Descartes, which is always a very good ship. It got a little bit of a nerf now because when you uh, got the upgrade to send both Fisiteers and Orcas, uh, you get a little bit lower uh, Orca capacity or Fisiteer capacity, but it was well deserved. The Descartes is still one of the best Covenant ships in, um, in the game, and it's an amazing ship that is a battle carrier that sends uh, very powerful uh, SRS tokens, and is with the new upgrade of the Covenant Orbat, is really tougher now. So, amazing ship. You get two more Covenant support cruisers. We've talked about them already, and you know how good they are. You have two advanced cruisers. And this is a little bit less needed, but you have a few very good ones. For example, you can have the Origen, which can boost your submarines and your automatas, or you can have the Zumina to secure your techno incubation drives. We did not talk about it. We'll, this is not an orbit review. Uh, you can also have the Vesalius, which sends some more uh, uh, Visitor tokens and, uh, I'm sorry, Orca tokens which is very good, very good again. So a little bit more niche, but good ships still. You have two Covenant Assault Machines, the uh, Lotan and the Ketos. Uh, I would recommend to build uh, one of each because they combo each other very well when you have one of each now. And they are very good uh, units to threaten even more your opponent and to be even more in this aggression mode, very good. And you have six Covenant Submarines. And in this case, yes, it's what we are talking about, the Diogen and the Praxila. If you're a new player, I highly, highly recommend that you build the Diogen with the Torpedoes instead of the Praxila, because they are, first of all, they're a little bit stronger, I would say, not stronger, but they are so much easier to use. Uh, the Praxila need really an experimented player to get the most out of them. And the uh, Diogen, you can just put them in the open sea and send some long range torpedoes all game long, and they're gonna bring their points back and they're very easy to use and they're annoying for your opponent to deal with. So, you also have two uh, Covenant SRS token and you have four in total. You have two escort tokens, Covenant love their escorts. You have two Orca tokens, which you did not have before, and two more visitor tokens. Overall, a great package for a great price. And I didn't say this today yet, but uh, if you watch this and you want those boxes, you can go on my OB place. They're at minus 10%. And when you are at, at your basket, you can choose Love and War Games. And it gives us like a couple percentage back. So it really helps. And it uh, I get this back as money to spend on my OB place myself. And then I can buy some more fleets for dystopian wars. The second big way to expand is the Archimedes Battle Fleet set. Okay, this is more of everything. Like, you can see from the price, 102 euros, okay. But this is everything that you need. It's basically what we said, like you don't have the Descartes, but you have the um, Archimedes instead. We'll talk about it in a second. You also have two support cruisers, two advanced cruisers. 
uh, two assault machines and six submarines, exactly the same as the starters that we've talked about. On top of that, you have two frontline cruisers and two, uh, sorry, six Covenant frigates. The frontline cruisers, uh, if you don't know what to do, you can make two Loveless or one Loveless and one Antarctica that can become a Belgica. Basically, that's my tip if you don't know what to do, but otherwise they are fine, like especially now. Six frigates, if you don't know what to do, build them as Merian, they are amazing. They are All the Covenant frigates are very good point-blank damage dealers. They will probably want the Techno Encabulation Drive, so if you play with the Covenant frigates, do have one of the advanced cruiser uh, be the one, I think it's not the Zumina, it's the Newton, that allows you to secure your Techno Encabulation Drives, more tokens, etc. The uh, Covenant Vault Ship, the Archimedes, is probably one of the coolest looking ship in the game. Like you can see how it looks like here already on the artwork and the miniature is even more glorious, if you can believe that. You have na two named versions actually. One, the Schneider that is extremely expensive but very powerful, more for experienced player. And another version of the Archimedes called the Arcadian Storm, if I, my memory is right, which is an easier to play variant. So if you're a new player, play with the Arcadian Storm in the beginning. It's more damage dealing oriented, so it's great. Or another version is the Nansen. It's a battle carrier. Again, extremely good ship, logistical support, six SRS tokens, three main weapons, great uh, defense. Like all the variants, like the Archimedes, the Arcadian Storm, and the Nansen are three of the best ships of the Covenant, especially the Nansen and the Arcadian Storm. And it means like they will be the centerpiece of your fleet if you build them. And then you have all the other ships. Overall, the Archimedes right now is probably the best uh, way to have a large Covenant fleet remains it to this date and uh, alongside the Kion it's going to be like this is going to be the main fleet that stays in the back while the Kion puts pressure on your opponent. And finally for the third option I hesitated between this and the Thule battle fleet set, the Thule being the flying saucers. Uh, I will not recommend the Thule because there are some very naughty things to do with the aerials um, with the two Hanebus as I've been saying. I think this will get nerfed because it's a bit too powerful competitively so instead I will recommend you to start with the Icarus Battlefleet set, you'll have two Covenant Frontline Cruisers and six Frigates, good. And you will have this good uh, battleship that can either be the Icarus, which is a very good carrier, a 10 SRS capacity, and it can really stay in the back and send wave after wave of SRS tokens, really good, uh, while your Kion and your forward uh, um, force deal damage. Or you can make the Diadelus, which is a very good battleship, again, with Fortunes of War. Uh, it has a shield, it's very tough actually, surprisingly tough, the Diadalus, and it's more like a support, like a rear force, and if you build the Diadalus, it gives bonuses to the aerial units around, so the Icarus uh, Battlefleet set is the first step to having the Thule later on, if you want to focus more then on the aerial side. But just for the Icarus, the Icarus is a great complement with the Kion, because Kion brings early game pressure, and from the beginning, the Icarus will be able to send a lot of SRS tokens to support your Kion and send yeah, all these waves of uh, drones to support it. All right, that is going to be it for today. Thank you for having stayed until the end. I hope again that you enjoy this new format of the unboxing and the Tactica all in one. The Kion is a beautiful, beautiful ship. Uh, I cannot wait to see it painted and on the battle reports. Don't worry, it's coming. I'm not sure soon because we have a big backlog of painting, but you will see it in battle reports on the channel, that's for sure. And uh, if you have any questions, of course, as always, ask them in the comments. Uh, if you want to buy those boxes, again, my place is the place, the way to go. Uh, if you want to support the channel and get minus 10%, give us a thumbs up. It always really helps. And you can give us a comment. First of all, it makes me very happy. I read every single comment. So I sometimes don't have time to answer all of them. But I, I for sure read every single one of them. And uh, every comment that you post, I will give you a ticket to try to win one of two fleets, a Union fleet or a Covenant fleet. So if you want to try to win a very good force that will be a perfect complement of this Kion fleet, you would gain uh, basically the Covenant starter and the Archimedes all-in-one already painted. If you want a chance to win this, give us a little comment and yeah, you will gain a ticket and we will see you when the channel reaches 1500 subscribers for the lottery. Thank you very much. Until the next video, take care of yourself and remember to keep spreading the love all around. Bye.